Jeffrey Hack Media, scene one, take one. That right there is how to professionally slate for the camera. Now I realize that I'm not using a digital slate, but the slate I'm using for this video is just as important. But what's even more important is the fact that you're going to learn how to professionally slate for the camera as a second AC, second assistant camera, and you're gonna learn to do this efficiently and effectively like a pro. So don't go anywhere because there's a lot of valuable information to come. So before we dive into the act of slating, I think it's really important for you to learn why we slate for the camera in the first place. Slating for the camera is extremely important because it provides important information for the camera and the audio. When it comes to the audio, the slate is important because it claps right before the scene is about to take place. In other words, before the director calls action. It's also important for footage reasons because the editor is looking at information on the slate that helps them out with the edit and knowing what they are looking at. And as some of you may or may not know, we synchronize audio through the process of audio waveforms. An audio wave is the vibration of an air molecule that's moving. So in other words, it's pretty much how sound travels. This is important to know because of the proximity of your microphone, also making an impact on the frequency response coming from your microphone. But I'm gonna save all that information for another video. If interested in learning more about that though, please let me know down in the comments. So how do we synchronize external audio with our footage? Well, in this digital age we're living in, we do this by aligning the external audio waveforms along with the camera's internal microphone audio, making sure that the waveform patterns align with each other. I realize that some people like to verbally slate the take instead of putting a slate in front of the camera with all the information provided for the editor, which I have done on previous productions, not gonna lie. However, if you choose to go about just audible information, you're missing out on the visual information the slate provides you, which is highly important for the editor, mind you. This information includes the production name, the camera roll, in other words, the SD card or SSD or external hard drive you're using that day of recording, the scene and shot number, the take number, the director's name, which is somewhat important, the cinematographer's name, so who was shooting it that day, the date of recording, and was it shot interior or exterior? Was it syncopated or was it MOS? And the slate provides white balance information. And if you've never heard of white balance, it's pretty much a factor that sets the right color tone for your video. So if you've ever noticed those colors, red, blue, green, black, white on top of your slate, that's pretty much reference for color balance. I don't think many people use it as much, but it's definitely there if you want to. Now, how should someone prepare before slating? Well, before you go on to slate anything, you wanna make sure that the information on the slate is filled out and is promising. And by promising, I mean that the information is correct. You need to know whether the shot is going to be in sync or if it's going to be MOS. <laughs> now, what do these abbreviations mean? Well, sync means recording audio and video separately. MOS stands for mit on sound. It also stands for mute on sound. But more importantly, MOS indicates to the editor that sound was not recorded for that take. So it's going to be pretty much a silent movie except you have like ambient sound effects and other dialogue that can probably go over it, maybe a voiceover, ADR. But for that specific take on location, there weren't any microphones recording the audio. Since the time period of using a motor to connect the audio and camera together, other meanings for MOS have been used such as this. Motor only sync, music on side, so maybe for a music video, if there's like an orchestra playing in the background or something that has to do with music. And there are a lot of other ways to refer to MOS. I tend to say mute on sound quite often. So now let's dive into the difference between interior and exterior. So when interior is circled on the slate, that means that the shot is being recorded inside a building or inside some sort of atmosphere where you're indoors and there's a roof or there's walls around. And yes, interior can also mean inside a vehicle. Exterior refers to what you think it is, outside in the great outdoors, nature, maybe you're outside a club, maybe you're outside a parking lot, maybe you're outside where there's a lot of traffic going on. Exteriors tend to be the most challenging when it comes to recording audio, but there are tools and ways around it. And lab microphones can do the trick, but they're not going to isolate everything completely out of the way. So these markings are really important for bigger productions because there could be a time where it's recorded inside a studio, but the studio makes it look like they're outside. I recently just worked on a film where we shot like a deserty location, but it was filmed inside a studio and we had some really cool set design that was able to make the characters look like they were sitting on the top of a mountain. Really, they were just sitting inside a studio against a white psych and we made it look like they were outside in the desert. 
And because we marked it interior, that's important because one, we're not actually in a desert area, so we shouldn't use that room tone anyway. And because we were inside a studio, we weren't outside in the actual location. It was all illusion. But for independent film, especially if you work on really low, like micro budget indie feature films, chances are you're gonna be recording on location in an exterior outside environment. Westerns, for example, they record out in the desert. I'm, this video is being filmed in Arizona, where I'm from, born and raised. So if we're recording a Western scene out in the desert, I'm gonna circle exterior because the sound of the external environment is going to match what's on camera. So now that we've learned all that basic stuff when it comes to slating, let's finally get into the action of slating. And again, before you slate, make sure the slate information is filled out correctly. And yes, that means that the scene number and take number are correct. But we are human and we are going to make mistakes every now and then, so don't put too much pressure on yourself if you get a scene and take number wrong, it happens. But you wanna to try to be as accurate as possible, which also means paying attention. So here's how to go about slating for the camera when synchronizing the external audio with your camera's audio. Make sure the top part of your slate is half open. It should look like it's about to speak something, or maybe it's playing Pac-Man or some, something equivalent. You know, Pac-Man. Place the slate in front of the camera and follow the cinematographer's guidelines. What I mean by this is you want to make sure that the slate is focused from the camera lens perspective. Sure, you can put a slate in front of the camera, but if it's blurred, then it's not even going to matter. The editor's not going to see what's on the slate because they can't identify the information. So wait for the cinematographer's cue before leaving the slate behind. You'll also want to wait for the first AD to give you the go before even going into slate. So for example, the call is usually sound, camera, slate. And then action, of course. Be sure to hold the slate steady and articulate your words. Don't rush the information because the editor is not going to be able to understand what you're saying. And if you have a scene or take number wrong on the slate, that makes it even worse. So please just take your time with slating. Make sure you enunciate the scene and take number and production, if you will, because you're going to save the editor a lot of time in post-production having to stress about, you know, what scene or take that was. Jeffrey Hack Media, scene one, take one. And then lastly, clap the slate. But do not bring the slate away from the camera lens immediately after clapping. And also don't do this. Scene one, take two. Scene one, take three. Scene one, take four. Don't clap before you're done talking, please. Because as you can tell, there's information there that we couldn't understand as well. So give the scene and take number, then clap it. Wait, give it a beat, and then move the slate off camera. I've seen so many slate people that go da 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 and then they just take it away immediately. That, that doesn't do anything for the editor in post-production. But in independent filmmaking, the director is often the editor. I have been the director where I've edited a lot of my own films. But if I'm to slate, I wanna make sure it's done properly because you never know who is actually gonna be editing the film. So another really, really important tactic with slating is soft sticks. Soft sticks. If you're slating a close-up shot right in front of an actor's face, this is where you'd want to practice the slating of soft sticks. With soft sticks, you're doing the same thing you'd normally do while slating, but you're making the clap a little softer. As an actor, a loud clap from the slate will get irritating and may possibly bring an actor out of their focus because the clap sound is just really loud and irritating. <laughs> and I really do want to just stress the importance of soft sticks because it is really important that the actor stays focused in the scene and that they're not interrupted by a loud uh, clap of the slate. I've had moments where I've acted on camera and there's a second AC or slate person that isn't as experienced with it and they just clap it super loud in front of me not realizing how loud they're actually clapping it. And I've, and I've asked too like can I get a soft sticks? They still don't know what that means like oh yeah and then bam right in front of me and I'm just like can I get a soft sticks times two? <laughs> so if you're watching this and maybe you've made that mistake, maybe you haven't, it's okay, I forgive you. We the actors forgive you, hopefully. Just please be aware of soft sticks and when to go about that situation. Again, if you're filming an extreme close-up or the camera's literally right next to the actor and the microphone can be as like close to the face as possible, soft sticks, soft sticks, soft sticks. I also recommend practicing your soft sticks before slating for the camera, just so that you can get the muscle memory of clapping it softly compared to really hard. So, MOS. When slating MOS, you don't need to clap the slate. As a matter of fact, 
you shouldn't clap the slate. Let's not confuse our editors in the editing room. Instead of clapping the slate, place your hand in between the top and the bottom part of the clapper. Your knuckles can be touching, maybe your finger touches, however you choose to go about it. But by holding the slate like this, you're indicating to the editor that there is no sound to be seen. You're also providing MOS information without accidentally clapping the slate. And please, make sure that MOS is circled on your slate. Not gonna lie, I have made those mistakes where I'm holding the slate, but sync is circled and the director knows what's up, but it's just good practice to have MOS circled. Now let's get into tail slating. Let's say there's not enough time to slate for the camera before the director calls action. Maybe time is sensitive, it's the end of the day, you're trying to get your last take before the sun goes down. It can be due to many timely reasons. But regardless, it's still incredibly important to put that slate in there before the camera comes Cuts. And of course, you want to be working with the detailed cinematographer so that they know to wait for the tail slate. Not every cinematographer is like that, unfortunately. So the proper way to do this is at the end of the take, flip your slate upside down. This indicates to the editor that you're slating at the end of the take compared to the beginning of the take. And just like before, repeat the process we've covered in the beginning of this video, or literally throughout this entire video. Which by the way, if you are enjoying this video, be sure to hit that like button. It helps out the channel tremendously. If the tail slate is in sync, clap it. If it's not, then don't clap it. Now I know we've covered a lot of basic slating information in this video. And if you've stuck around with me this long, then one, thank you so much for doing so. And two, let me know down in the comments what you've gotten from this video. But also, I'm not a perfect filmmaker. I'm pretty sure I left out some parts maybe in this video that you guys may know better than I do. So if there are some parts I didn't touch on in this video, please let me know down in the comments and I'd love to learn more about that and share the information I learned with you guys in another YouTube video. This channel is dedicated to teaching everyone on all sorts of levels about film production and pretty much the creative filmmaking process. So if you like my energy, the way I teach things through video, then please let me know in the comments anything that you would like to learn from me in regards to film production. And if you noticed or didn't notice, I'm wearing a DoD Pocket Wireless transmitter with an internal microphone and it sounds absolutely amazing in my opinion. I made a specific video talking about this special microphone and you can find that video right next to me. I think this wireless microphone is fantastic for all content creators and especially inspiring filmmakers like yourself. Thank you for choosing the Hack Experience. Go ahead and click on that video and I'll look forward to seeing you there.